All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the um, exam solutions video, and I hope that you thought that it was really straightforward like I did. Um, I just do want to go over a couple more things in this video, but I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Um, we've got 11.3. It starts on page 829. You will be taking notes in the book. You should have taken notes on a separate piece of paper for um, the British guy. All right. So starting with vocabulary startup, it says measures of variation are used to describe the distribution or spread of the data. They describe how the values of the data vary um, with a single number. So a quartile is one measure of variation. So you just learned about quartiles in the video um, from the British guy. Yes, I'm going to keep calling him the British guy. I have no idea if he's British. Um, it says, look in a dictionary and find words that begin with quar, Q-U-A-R. Um, write two words in their definitions. So I'm just going to go ahead and come up with one that we can all use. Um, I think we can agree quarter is a good number to use. Um, when we're thinking of the definition of quarter, um, you might think 25 cents, but really it's one-fourth of a dollar. Um, a quarter in a football game is one-fourth of the total game. So one-fourth of something is a quarter. A quarter of a cup, one-fourth of a cup. All right, so a quarter of something is what I want you to write here. And if you'd like to look up some other um, words and their definitions that start with Q-U-A-R, you can. Uh, based on the definitions there, fill in the blank below. Quartiles are values that divide a set of data into blank equal parts. And hopefully you know that it's four equal parts. Quart quarter is one-fourth of something. Um, quartile is going to be four as well, four equal parts. All right, so James asks his classmates how many hours of TV they watch in a typical day. Divide the data into four equal parts and draw a circle around each part. So um, if the first thing we need to, to do is figure out how many um, classmates were surveyed. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so we've got 16 all together. Oops, sorry. I'm going to erase that. 16 all together. And so we're going to divide that data into four equal parts. So there's going to be a group of four in each part. So how many data values are in each group? It'll be four. And when we separate it, we'll have um, four here, four here, four in this group, and last but not least, four in this group. And so notice that the values in each group aren't necessarily all the same. In the first group, my values are zero, 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 one. In the second group, my values are one, 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 two. In my third group, it's two, 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 three. In my next group, it's four, five, five, five. So um, just wanted to make that clear that they don't have to be the same numbers. Quartiles. So here's some vocabulary. Quartiles are values that divide the data set into four equal parts. We just talked about that. The first and third quartiles. The first and third quartiles are the medians of the data values less than the median and greater than the median. Okay, so we've got the first quartile is the uh, median uh, that are less than our data values that are less than, or sorry, are the medians of the data values less than the median. So for instance, we've got, here's our, here's our situation. We've got the median here that's in the middle of all our data, right? From this point to this, the median for this one is called our first quartile. And then on the other side, from our median to the highest point, the median of that is called our third quartile. So go ahead and draw that picture. Again, this is just kind of going over vocabulary. Um, the intercortile, the interquartile range is the distance between the first and third quartiles of the data set. Okay, so now we're talking about the distance between the first and third quartile. So really that to find that, we would just take quartile 3 minus quartile 1, and that would tell us the um, quartile range. That's very simple. The range range, so the actual range, and I'm just going to move this out of the way so I have more room to write. The normal range is the difference between the greatest and least values of the data. 
So you take the biggest number minus the smallest number and you get range. And of course you've already put the numbers in numerical order from least to greatest so you take one minus the other and they're already right there for you. Oops, sorry, let me get rid of this stuff. All right, and you can read over this if you'd like to. I'm just gonna bypass it since you already learned about how to find the quartiles. We'll, bur we'll go past this as well. Um, I like this little note here. It says the interquartile range. If the interquartile range is low, the middle data are grouped closely together. So think of it again, we've got, um, you know, we've got our median here which I'll do abbreviation, and then over here we have our quartile 1, and over here we have our quartile 3, and the difference from here to here is the IQR, the uh, interquartile range. Now if that's a low number, if this is a small number, it means that there's not a big spread between these two numbers, between quartile 1 and quartile 3. So it's a so if they're it's a low number, which is fine if it's a low number, it just means that they're grouped closely together. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to get rid of that. All right, so here's the thing. This is what we want to find. The measures of variation, we're going to be looking for the range. We're going to be looking for the median. We're going to be looking for quartile 1, quartile 3 and the IQR, okay, the interquartile range. So these are the things I want you to find right now. Um, remember, range is just the biggest minus the smallest. Median, when you put them in order from least to greatest, will be in the center of your data, and you just learned from the British guy how to do that, so I'd like for you to go ahead and do this now. Pause the video. I'm going to show you the answers in a moment. All right, first I want to show you my range. The answer was 15. For median, um, I went ahead and did my n plus 1 divided by 2. There's 10 digits. Divided by 1 will be, um, or sorry, add 1, then divide by 2 is going to be 5.5. So the position I'm looking for is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a little half to get you right there. And so when I did that, I needed to do the two numbers in the middle, or to find the middle of the two, I went ahead and did 60 plus 61 divided by 2. 121 divided by 2 which is 60.5. Maybe you would have just known that six, the difference, the halfway mark between 60 and 61 would be 60.5. I don't know. All right, now I'm going to go over the quartiles, so I'll come back to that. All right, for our quartile 1, I did my n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, my median right here is in the center of these two, so the positions I have are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I add 1 to that, divide by 2, and I get third position. So my first quartile is 58. And then I do my quartile 3, which again is still the third position, this time from the end. So I count backwards from the end, and I get my um, 64 as my third quartile. Now to figure out my um, quartile range, I'm just going to take, for my IQR, I'm just going to subtract... Um, my two quartiles, and I get six as my quartile range, which is a small number, which means that my spread is pretty close together. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about that they didn't go over in the video are outliers. An outlier is a data value that's either much greater or much less than the other values in the data set. So it's really important. It's either going to be much greater or much less than the other values in the data set. And if the data value is more than 1.5 times the value of the interquartile range beyond the quartile, it is an outlier. So let's see how they work that out. So um, example number two I'm just going to go over. I'm not going to um, figure it out. They've already figured all the hard stuff out for us. But um, they said the ages of the candidates in an election are 23, 48, 49, 55, 57, 63, and 72. And they want us to name any outliers in the data. So to figure out whether or not there's any outliers, um, the mathematical way to do so is to take the two interquartiles and subtract them to get 15. So they've already told us that um, 
this is our third quartile and this is our um, first quartile, okay, because they subtract them right here for us. We didn't do the work for that. They did it. If they didn't provide it, we would have had to do it ourselves. So we find that the interquartile range is 15. We're then going to find the, and these are basically our steps here, okay? So number one, and then step number two is going to be multiplying the interquartile range by 1.5. So we take, so we're going to multiply by 1.5, our IQR, and so we do 15 times 1.5, which is 22.5. Now we're not done. That doesn't tell us anything still. Now our third step is to subtract that number, okay, from the first quartile and add it to the third quartile to find the limits. So if we take our, um, our first quartile and we subtract 22.5, we get 25.5. This is the lowest number we can have. If you notice, 23 is lower than our lowest number. And then to find out what our highest number is, we take our um, third quartile and we add the 22, we add this number to it, and we get 85.5. Our highest number is 72, which lies between these two numbers, so it's okay. So any number outside of 22.5 and 85.5 are going to be outliers. And so in this case, 23 is our outlier. There's not always an outlier, um, but if there's a big enough spread, then it's an outlier. Now, common sense told me already that 23 would be a good outlier. Um, I like to think of 23 as an outright lie. Like, what 23-year-old are candidates in an election? Like, seriously, 23 years old? That's insane. We've got 40-year-olds, we've got 50-year-olds, we have a 60-year-old and 70-year-old, but we don't even have any 30-year-olds. We skipped all the way down to 20. No, 23 is just too young. I think he's an outright liar. He's lying about his age. I don't know. All right. Ooh, no, no, no. So now, hold on. I told you guys I did a ridiculous amount of work before and had to delete it, so that was part of it. Sorry, that was a bunch of mess. All right, so now we're going to do B, and this time they want us to find any outliers in the data set. To be able to do that, you have to find the quartiles. Yay for you. So you're going to find the quartiles 1 and 3, get the IQR, which is the interquartile range, and then you're going to multiply that times 1.5, and you're going to follow those steps from the last one. Okay? So make sure you're following these steps, 1, 2, and 3. First thing we have to do is use the British guy's way to get our quartiles in the first place, because we have to have our interquartile range to go any further. So go ahead and find your quartiles then find your IQR, then follow the steps for number two. Pause the video now. All right, so first things first, um, I needed to find the median, and that was 275. Then from there, I would figure out my quarter one, my quartile one, which there's only two positions to the left of my median, and so I have... Um, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 divided by 2, we're looking for the 1 and a half p position. I like to just put TH for the heck of it. Sorry. Sorry, hold on a second. Sorry about that. All right, so you guys are going to hate me because this video is getting longer than I meant for it to be. Um, all right, so then I found my quartile 1, and then I found my quartile 3. I subtracted them to find 568. Now to figure out whether or not um, I have an outlier, I'm going to subtract 568 from quartile 1, which is going to make a negative number. I hope you can see that it would make a negative number. So I know that my 88 is fine. And then I'm going to add it to my 737.5, and that's going to be over 1,200. I'm just estimating because it's like 700 and something plus 500 and something. 1200 and so my one my 1121 falls within that as well so name any outliers there are in this data set there are none it's just a really wide spread out data set it's crazy I know because I would think that 88 or 1100 would be that way but because it's so spread out from 88 all the way up to 1121 it makes it kind of weird looking so there you go 
Number three is great. Um, I just love looking at examples where they tell us what the quartiles are, but they don't actually, <laughs> but they don't actually um, tell us how to find them. Um, maybe I missed that somewhere. So um, if you'd like to try out number three on your own, you certainly can, just for extra practice, since it already has the answers for you. It wouldn't be a horrible idea just to get some extra practice. Um, it says, which measure of center would be like would most likely be affected by an outlier. So if you have a number that's just insane, just really, really big, like I like to tell this story that um, I had my kids, I asked my kids in my class one year when I taught eighth grade um, to tell me, or maybe it was seventh grade, yeah, it was seventh grade. Um, I was making box and whisker plots and I was asking them to tell me how many cousins they had. And so I'm going around the room and everybody had a sticky note and they're all telling me how many cousins they have. And I made a number line. And on the board, I put a number line. I made it pretty big because, you know, some people do have big, a, a large amount of family. And so I had some saying, you know, zero, some saying one or two or three or four or five or six, maybe even up to 10 or 12. I think the highest one I had was 14. And then all of a sudden this kid comes up and he's like, I don't know where to put mine. I have 120 cousins. And I was like, that's insane. And so it was funny because he was the outlier, obviously, with 120 cousins compared to everybody else, which were around, you know, five. Um, his number was the outlier. And what I like to joke about, because I asked him how he knew he had 120 cousins and he said he didn't actually know how many cousins he had. And so it was a lie. He was just making up a number. And so he was outright lying. So an outlier is an outright liar. Get it? Out liar, outright liar. Oh, I'm so funny. All right. So, um, what would be mostly affected by that huge number? You know, if all the other numbers are in the 10 range and I've got one that's 120, um, what center measure of center would be? Would it be mean? Would it be median? Or would it be mode? Well, mode wouldn't be affected at all because an outlier is all by itself out in the middle of nowhere. Whereas we have um, median, which would be, um, you know, just a center. So that just kicks us off one number because it's either, you know, on the right or the left. But mean would be hugely affected because I'm adding this with these other smaller numbers and then finding the difference or the um, the average. And so that would show a number that's just insane. So mean would be the one that's mostly affected. All right, go ahead and do this one and we'll come back and I'll just show you the answers, okay? All right, if you're brave enough to try that out, um, you would see that the range was 58 for one, 47 for the other. The median was 50 and 47. The quartiles, 1 and 3, were 30 and 70, 32 and 66. And then quartile, um, the interquartile range was, uh, you know, just subtracting these two numbers. So we've got 40 and 34. Um, and then, you know, the medians are close, but the temperatures are more spread out when you're in the antelope um, area. Okay, because we've got... Um, a low 20, low 30, low 40, high 50, and then low 70, high 70. Whereas in um, Augusta, we've got you know high 28, high 20, low 30s, low 40s, low 50s, mid 60s, and mid 70s. So you know here in Antelope, we kind of skip over the 60s altogether. Um, so and we jump from low 40s to high 50s. So it's a big jump. It's more gradual over here on this side. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm not going to go over these extra examples. You guys have had enough. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video with the other guy, whether he's British or not. I have no idea, but we're going to call him that. And I'll see you in school. Thanks, guys. Sorry it's so long.